Hello everyone and welcome back to the WSO2 API Manager series. This video is the conceptual one towards the two popular ways of accessing the APIs that is token based access versus API key based access. So let's start. Here is the quick agenda for this session. We will see about the token based API access, its pros and cons, API key based access, pros and cons of API key based approach. We'll see some of the use cases of both approaches. Uh, then we'll see the comparison metrics and the best practices. So the token based API access typically requires users of the tokens. Okay, so when we say tokens, it is typically a JWT or the OPEC or a specific length of the characters which contains some information for accessing the APIs. Typically, uh, we use over two tokens for authorization and authentication. So we need an authorization server that can do all this token related stuff. We call it as an authorization server. For example, WSO2 identity server, key clock, octa, ping identity, etc. Mostly it's a bearer tokens, which is OR2 and JWT, which is a JSON web tokens are widely used in authorization header while calling the API. So here is the technical flow of the token based access. The client make a request for a token which typically goes to an authorization server. The authorization server authenticates the client details and it issues a token. Now the client use this token in typically in the form of uh, in the headers for uh, sending the data and it calls the protected resource and then the resource is getting served and the response is being sent back to the client. There are several pros and cons for the token based approach. Let's talk about pros. The security. So when we talk about tokens, it, it can carry a scope. So with even with API manager, while generating the token, we can issue uh, or we can define a particular scope for which the token can be generated, which is typically called as a fine grained access control implementation. There is an expiration time and other claims to enhance the security of the token. Granular access control, as we already talked about, which is a fine grained access control, which is permissions and access control to the protected resources via tokens, short lived tokens. So, we can define a particular the validity of the token or the lifespan of the token so that it can be used for a certain period only. So it basically reduces the risk if a token is compromised. Interoperability. So over 2 and JWT are widely adopted standards. So this can be used in any of the implementation. There are some of the cons of this approach like complexity. So it requires some complex setup with an authorization server. So if we are doing the setting up the third party uh, authorization server, then we have to do the setup, do the integration, etc. The token management. It involves handling of the token expiration and refreshing. For example, WS2 API manager provides, uh, there is a token generation API, which is slash over two slash token. There is a token refresh token API, which is over two slash refresh token. So both of the ways we can generate and refresh the token. Performance overhead. Definitely if some additional job is getting done by the system, then it will take some time, which will result in some performance impact. Now let's talk about API key based access. So API key based access uses a simple key for authentication. So when we say the simple key, it could be a particular string, it could be an alphanumeric key, or even it could be a JWT. API manager, when with the help of API manager, we can generate the API key, which is a form of the JWT only. So API keys can be generated and issued by the API provider. Let's see how the technical flow it works. So the client request for an API key and the API provider generates the API key for the same. Then the provider makes a call to the third party 
system or the API provider with the API key and the resource is getting served and response is sent back to the caller. There are some pros and cons of this approach as well. Simplicity, that means it's easy to implement. That is no complex setup or authorization server kind of implementation is required. It is typically faster if we talk about the speed since only the token verification is required. There is, sorry, there is no token verification is required. It's only the key which is getting verified for access. There is no requirement of authorization server. We already talked some of the cons like security perspective, API keys are less secure. So if compromised, they can be used indefinitely. There are some ways which with the help of that, we can make additional security to our API keys that while generating the API key, we can attach additional parameters like for the particular IP or other things that can be done to secure your API key. So that can be seen in the developer portal while generating the API key. Limited control, it's, it's difficult to implement uh, the fine grained access control using the API key because it's not linked to any authentication and authorization. So yeah, the key management, it requires manual key rotation and management. So for example, you have generated a key for a particular duration or let's say your key has been compromised. So you have to manually go for the rotation of the keys. Now let's talk, talk about some of the use cases of both of the approaches. So when to use which one for as a best practices. So for token based access where applications are requiring the fine grained access control, there are some of the scenarios where we need the tokens to be of a short span of time. Some use cases involving the delegated access control like the third party apps accessing the user data. Uh, then the environments where we need the strong security and the compliance, for example, the financial services. For API key based access, uh, we can use in internal applications with limited security requirements. There are some of the scenarios where we have internal as well as the external APIs access. So for internal APIs access, we can use this uh, API key based approach. We can use for the simple use cases where the use and the speed are prioritized and no much sensitive data is getting exposed. A development and testing environment, definitely we can go with this approach to bootstrap our development process. Application with limited user scope and low risk. So now let's see some of the comparison metrics to see the difference between both of the approaches. Security, complexity, granular access control, setup requirements, token management and performance. You can see based upon our requirement, uh, how the token based access and API key based access can suit into your project or into your requirements. So you can see this matrix or you can follow this matrix to implement the same. Some of the best practices which I suggested are for token based access use short lived tokens. It should not be of the much or the indefinite validity. Uh, we can also use the token revocation with API manager. We have the token revocation API. So we always suggest our caller to revoke the token once the job is done. We can use the secure storage for the tokens. For API key based access, we can rotate. We must rotate the uh, the keys on the regular basis. We can expose of the rest APIs for the rotation of the API key. We can have a limited API key scope wherever it is required. A securely store and manage the API keys. So thank you very much.